Good morning to you this wonderful day of worship. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet as we desire to praise God. Put your hands together as we begin our time of worship. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on. be seated. I almost came up dancing onto the stage and jumping. What a wonderful way to start our worship today. Welcome. I'm David Hall, one of the pastors here at Christ Church. What a joy it is. We look forward all week only to being here in worship. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us from home. Our youth are invited tonight to something called Happy all days it's a celebration tonight, this evening from 5 to 6 o'clock. The youth are doing this. They are doing some really cool things these days. They realize they've missed celebrating all the holidays this year because of the pandemic. So they're cramming them all in one night tonight. You don't want to miss this, kids. Come tonight and join in the fun. 
You may have noticed on Tuesdays now, we're back to having the farmer's market out on our parking lot. It's called the Lookout Farmer's Market. It has produce from local farmers and growers. It's so cool to have them out there and have people coming in. Support them if you would. This coming Wednesday night, I'm going to be starting a new Bible study on Facebook Live. Uh, we just finished the book of Revelation. Whew. <laughs> And, uh, and this week we start the Gospel of John. It has, it's a very theological, a very deep gospel. It has a lot of those I am statements. A lot of our sermon scriptures have been from John lately. This is going to be a great study, I think. It, it goes from 7 to 7.45, Facebook Live. If you don't do Facebook Live, then you can just go on our website and, and look at watch and listen and hit online Bible study, and it'll be archived there. We need to register attendance now. And so if you're sitting closest to the aisle on your row here in the sanctuary, reach up and take out the blue attendance pad. Write in the names of everybody in your party and a contact number for each or for one of those. And then pass the pad along your row and back. For those of you who are at home, if you're sitting on the end of the couch, reach up and take down your cell phone, <laughs> open the church app and register your attendance, and then pass it down the couch so everybody can do that. If you have a prayer request, seriously, or if you would desire a call from a pastor, please just put that in the notes section, and one of us will certainly follow up. Our scripture today is from John. It's John chapter 20. I'll be reading verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Well, hello, and welcome to Children's Moment. I'm so glad that you have joined us today. I'm Mary Beth Hammett, the Children's Ministry Director at Christ. So kids, just gather around and let's just talk for a minute. I don't know, you probably are not old enough to remember this, but Mission Impossible, uh, there were several movies uh, with this title, and even a long time ago, there was a TV show on Mission Impossible. And basically, it was a person was given this big old challenge that was practically impossible to do. And the whole uh, idea was that they were going to do it. Well, that's kind of how the disciples felt when Jesus said to them, I want you to tell everybody in the whole world about me. They were like, oh, that's impossible. But Jesus came back and said, no, with me, I will be with you everywhere you go and then it will be possible because with jesus everything is possible so my question for you today is who does jesus have for you to talk to this week about him or what will you do this week to share god and honor him that's your challenge it is mission possible i'll see you next week Let's stand together as we continue in our worship. His presence is here in this place. His spirit has been poured out. He promises where two or more are gathered in his name that he is there. And so we're going to sing this prayer. And let's just lift our voices together and sing this out.
know how beautiful it is to hear your voices singing after so long without being able to hear that. Amen. You can be seated this morning. I'd like to ask us to continue in that spirit of prayer and afterwards we'll, we'll call for the offering. Let us pray. Living, loving, and gracious spirit, yes, fall afresh on us. Pour your new life into us as individuals Breathe the breath of life into us. And as a church right here on this corner, breathe the breath of life into us. And as a church around the world, breathe your new life into us. As on the day of Pentecost, people gathered from around the world and they understood each other and they were made one by your spirit. Also, help us to understand each other and make us one by your spirit. Help us to do those missions that are impossible before us, to love others and to help others and to serve the world and to give witness of our faith in you. Yes, breathe new life into us. We lift up to you this day those around the world experiencing the sufferings of the pandemic and especially those in India. Bring your healing to them and around the world. We pray too for those who are going through a time of sickness and surgeries and tests. As a great physician, by your Holy Spirit, bring your healing power through the medical teams, through everybody involved in the process, the caregivers, to bring your healing into their lives. And those who are grieving, we pray your comfort and peace because in John, the Gospel of John, you spoke of your Holy Spirit bringing your comfort and your peace. So pour that into those who are grieving, those who are afraid, and let us step forward with courage and bravery into the new day you are calling us. We pray now together the prayer you continue to teach us how to pray by your Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Isn't it a joy to give our tithes and offerings into the our God who gives us so much. You who are present with us this day know you can give in the offering boxes as you enter and exit the sanctuary. Those of you at home or wherever you are during this season of vacations, you can give online or you can come by the church and give at the church office or you can mail in your checks, however you desire to give. But I know that, that it is a cheerful experience to give. God bless you. Before I share the message for today, let me, let me say a quick word about what's going to be going on around here the next two weeks. I'm going to be doing what is sometimes called a pulpit exchange with two other pastors in our area. Next Sunday, I will be at Signal Crest United Methodist Church and their senior pastor, Reverend Josh Kilburn, will be here to preach. And then in two weeks, I'll be switching with the pastor at Harrison United Methodist Church. Dr. Adam McKee will be here to preach. So be sure to join in in worship, either in person or online, and hear these two fine preachers 
um, and be praying for me as I go to share with others. On the Christian calendar, we share the story of Jesus every year. We start before Christmas and on through Easter and beyond. On that calendar, today is known as the day of Pentecost. One of the writers of the story of Jesus, the life of Jesus while he was here on earth, was a man named Luke. He wrote not only the gospel account of the life of Jesus while he was here, but he did a follow-up book that he called The Acts of the Apostles. And it's there that he told this story about the day of Pentecost. It was a Jewish festival. It was one of the annual Jewish festivals that brought a lot of people to Jerusalem. And Luke emphasizes that it was on that day, uh, the day of Pentecost, when a lot of people were there, that the Holy Spirit came to those disciples in a very powerful way to empower them for their mission of continuing Jesus' mission on the earth. So for Luke, there was Easter, then there was 50 days, and then the Spirit came on Pentecost for the disciples. But there was another writer of the story of Jesus, as David was mentioning earlier, a man named John. John gives us a different perspective, another angle on the story. His focus on the Spirit coming to the disciples happened on the night of Easter. I want to unpack how he tells the story, what he is trying to emphasize as he tells the story, and then look at what does that still mean for us today. As John tells the story, the disciples are in a room and have the doors locked because they're scared of those same Jewish leaders. They saw what they had done to their Lord. They saw how they brought about the death of Jesus, and they figure it's quite possible the same could happen to them. So they're locked in the room. And all of a sudden, Jesus is just there. He's right there in their midst. In his resurrected body, Walls and doors are no obstacle to him. That, that point of the story, that scene, that part of the scene in and of itself is a, is a scene of reassurance for all of us that, that we're going to live, we're going to have another body after this body dies. And that, and that what we, how we live our lives in this world is preparing us, is a way of getting prepared for life in that other world. The question is, how are you preparing for that other life, that other world? It's noteworthy to note, to, to, to look at, to listen to the first thing Jesus said to his disciples after his resurrection, according to John. Did you hear it? He stands among them and says, peace be with you. When, I'm, when I hear that, I'm immediately reminded of something he said just 72 hours before that. He'd been with the disciples, sharing a meal with them. There'd been all kinds of troubling things happening leading up to that night. There were troubling things that happened during that evening as they shared that meal. And Jesus knew of more trouble that was coming in the next few hours and so he wanted to reassure them, and here's what he said to them. Here's one of the things he said to them. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Now here he is three nights later, and the first thing he says is to remind them of that peace that he offers. I believe that's still what he offers to you and to me and to everybody else. In the midst of our fears, our doubts, our struggles, he says to you, to all of us, peace be with you. Then John includes this detail. He showed them his hands and his side. What's in his hands and his side? The scars. The, 
the prints, the imprints of where the nails and the spear were driven into him. They're marks that proved that he was who he was saying he was, claiming to be to those disciples, but they're also marks that remind us of who he is for us, what he did for you and me and everybody else. He is the God who enters into our suffering and pain and hurt, offering healing and hope and peace. It's a reminder to us who follow him that if we are going to represent him to other people, that we must also be willing to enter into their hurt, their pain, their hurting. We listen and we seek to learn from them and their experience in life, what, how they see the world, how they've come to the conclusions they have. So often we're focused on what we want to share with them or what we think they need to hear or believe or think. And we fail to remember that our first calling is to enter into their world, to connect with them so that then we can share the good news of Christ from where they are. We're to enter into their hurt, their pain. He entered our world. We seek to enter their world. Notice then that Jesus repeats what he just said. Peace be with you. I hear a point of emphasis here. Sounds like he knows that we need to hear that often. Earlier this morning, as I was going over this message, I received this word for this moment to include right here. If you want peace, don't contribute to the chaos. If you want peace, don't contribute to the chaos. That was a word for me, too. Don't get caught up in the chaos. Jesus is reminding us where true peace comes from. It does not come from this world. It comes from God. If you want peace, that's where you find it. Nowhere else. Here's the next thing Jesus said to them. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. It's important to note that as John tells the story, he's not just focused on the 11. Not just those 11 of the inner circle of Jesus' disciples. That as John tells the story, he speaks, he has Jesus speaking to the whole community. And as John is writing to his community of the followers of Jesus some 60 years later, Jesus, he has Jesus speaking to that community as well. And more importantly for us today, it's also for those of us who follow him today. As the Father has sent me, Jesus says to us, I am sending you. Well, once again, that triggers for me something else that Jesus said earlier in this same gospel according to John. Jesus was in a discussion at that point with a religious leader named Nicodemus. And after he spoke of God's love for the whole world, he said, For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I ask that we put those two verses together on the same slide because I, I'd never noticed this before. In all my years of preaching and studying the scriptures, I'd never noticed. I, I think there's a connection in those two verses. It's almost like a mathematical formula or a scientific formula for those of you who think that in those terms. If God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world and the Son is sending us into the world as the Father has sent him, then the Son is not sending us into the world to condemn the world. If you are into condemning others, whether it's that other political party or the media or the police or the professional athletes or whoever else, be assured that you do not represent Jesus Christ when you do that. He did not and does not send us into the world to condemn. He sends us into the world to save. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Go do what I did. Go do what you've seen me do. Go say what you've seen, heard me say. 
And then comes the piece, I think the key piece for this whole scene. Surely, John wrote it this way. He said, with that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. He had to be intentional in in writing it that way. Surely, in writing it that way, John wants us to hear, to be reminded of a scene from way back at the beginning of the Bible, way back in Genesis in one of the creation stories there. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. It's as if John is saying there was a whole new creation happening there on the evening of Easter as Jesus breathes on these disciples, breathes into them, if you will, the Holy Spirit, the life source and force, the life source and force that they would need to carry out their mission. He was sending them on a daunting mission to go do, continue doing what he'd been doing. But he also gifted them with what they would need to accomplish that mission. It's a reminder of a message that flows throughout the Bible. God will never ask you to do anything, but what God will not also give you all you need to do it. So, let's focus on two details of this story as we seek to be the people of Christ. First, Jesus sends you on a mission. Let let this scene from Easter evening be personal for you. Hear Jesus say to you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And yes, uh, Mary Beth and I connected a little bit. On I, I'd actually forgotten that she had told me weeks ago that she was going to be talking about Mission Impossible because I've got it right here. I was reminded of Mission Impossible when I heard that. And, and here's the cast from some of you. When you think of Mission Impossible, you think from back in the 60s, the TV series. And some of you think about a movie series. I thought of both of them. I was a fan of both of them. And, and in each of those episodes, the leader would be given details about some, a situation. And then would the, the, the tape recording, the voice would say, um, what would the, your mission. Yeah, I went blank. Your mission, your mission, should you decide to accept it and then give the details of the mission. Well, sometimes the mission that Jesus has given us can seem impossible. It can seem so daunting. We still have to decide every day and every week whether we're going to accept that mission. In the world in which we live now, it can seem so daunting to try to bring peace in the midst of so much chaos to try to bring unity in the midst of so much division. Sometimes I just want to go hide. But I keep hearing this calling to go in the midst of all that and be the people of Christ, to offer a different message, to be a different kind of people than what the world is so caught up in right now. To be told by Jesus to continue doing what he was doing can seem so impossible. We're called to heal people and feed people and forgive people and reconcile people. We're called to convince people that Jesus Christ really is the way of life in this world and the next. We're called to love even in the face of hatred. We're called to offer hope even in the midst of despair. We're called to trust God no matter what happens, it can be daunting. It can seem impossible. But just like those first disciples on Easter evening, we're not called to do any of that on our own. You're never called to do any of that on your own. Jesus has already gifted us with his suffering for us, his death for us, providing salvation for us, welcoming us into the family of God. And he follows that up with another gift, with this offering. Receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, all the songs that we've already sung this morning have been marvelous at reminding us of that, of this Holy Spirit that has been promised to us 
And by the way, the song that's coming after the sermon is also excellent in reminding us that this spirit is one with God the Father, one with God the Son. And that when we are guided by that spirit, we are in touch with the one God. I hope you'll hang on to hear it. Receive life. Receive power. Receive wisdom and courage. Receive all you will need to do whatever you're called and guided to do. I love this picture that we're using today for the sermon reflective slide. Uh, it's, it's a statue known as Christ the Redeemer. Just a couple of quick facts about it. It towers 2,300 feet over Rio de Janeiro. The statue itself is 98 feet tall, it's the, and at that size, it's the fourth largest statue of, of Christ in the whole world. And in 2007, it was designated as one of the, seven, the new seven wonders of the world. I'm using it today because to me, it, it's one of my favorite images of Jesus. Arms outstretched. I'm first of all reminded of his arms outstretched on the cross giving his life as a way of welcoming you and me and everybody else into the family of God. The whole world is invited. But also, I see Jesus in that image, in that stance, as he might have been on that Easter evening with the disciples and still is over us, stretching out his arms over us to say, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. When Jesus gives you a mission that is part of his mission, remember this picture and hear him saying to you, receive the Holy Spirit. When he sends you to your neighbor's house or apartment or condo to build a relationship with that neighbor or with that family, hear him saying to you, receive the Holy Spirit as you go. When he sends you to the Bethlehem Center to make a difference in the lives of the children there or to any other mission site, as you go, hear him say to you, receive the Holy Spirit. Don't just go on your own. Know that the Spirit goes with you. When he sends you to visit that nursing home, hear him say to you, receive the Holy Spirit. When he sends you to fight against that situation of injustice, hear him say to you, with his arms outstretched, receive the Holy Spirit as you go. When he sends you to forgive that person that you find it so hard to forgive, see him look into your eyes and hear him breathe a sigh of affirmation on you and say to you, receive the Holy Spirit who will empower you to forgive when he sends you into that situation that looks so impossible know that you don't go alone the spirit is with you this scene from Easter evening is a it's as if it's a as, as you hear John tell it it's as if it's a culminating new creation scene that Jesus is breathing new life, a fresh wind of the Spirit onto these disciples as he sends them out into the world to go continue his mission. It's reflective of this mission that God's been on ever since the beginning of time. When Moses was sent to the Pharaoh God said, I'll be with you. I'll go with you. When Joshua, Joshua was called by God to lead the people into the promised land, he said, I'll be with you. You're not on your own. When Mary, when the angel told Mary that she was to become the mother of the Messiah, she was assured this was of the Holy Spirit. When you're given a mission that's part of the bigger mission that God's been on since the beginning of time, be reminded on this day of Pentecost that you are gifted with these words from Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit for the rest of your life. It is my prayer that you'll remember this image, this statue, 
And whether you're facing a struggle or you're being sent on a mission, you'll see that image and you'll hear him say to you, receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Oh God, we celebrate this day that not only do you invite us to be a part of your mission to the whole world, not only do you invite us to be a part of your mission to our neighbors and to the people we work alongside and go to school with and live around and encounter every day, but you gift us with your spirit. You invite us to receive this spirit, to know that we go in the strength of your spirit, not in our own strength, not in our own understanding, not in our own thinking, but we go to represent you. We go on your behalf. We hear Jesus say when he was among us that he and his Father were one. We also know that this Spirit is one with you. Guide us, remind us that we're not alone in this world, that we're not alone in our struggles, anything we face, but we're also not alone when you send us on your mission. Help us hear that you gift us with your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks and we celebrate in Jesus' name. Amen.
He showed them his hands and his side to remind them of what he had done for you, to remind us of what he's done for each of us. If you've not yet received him and started that relationship with him, we want to help you with that. For those in the room, we invite you to come. For those who are watching, we invite you to contact us. David Hall would love to speak with you about that as well as get you connected here at Christ Church. So then he said, I'm sending you. I, I welcome you. First of all, you're welcome. And now I send you to welcome others. I send you to be different than the world. I send you with a peace that doesn't come from the world to share with the world that peace, to share with the world my forgiveness, to share with the world my grace, my love, to be my people. May we go to be the people of Christ, knowing that he says to each of us, as you go, receive the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week. We hope to see you next.